use it later. So, uh, but if, if you are, um, of course, um, if this applies to you, I, I, I admonish you to take heed to what God has for us to hear and um, apply this stuff to your life. We, of course, thank you for, to the ushers. Um, they, yes, um, yes, we, yes. we have handouts. We have fill-in sheets so you can follow along. So if you haven't gotten one, you can get one and, and follow along and fill it out and um, take good notes on it on today. So um, Genesis 24 and 1, if you have it, say amen. amen. I'm going to do the reading. Y'all follow along with me with your eyes and your hearts because it's a number of verses I'm going to read. Uh, but just follow along with me with your eyes and with your hearts. I'm beginning at verse 1. It says this, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Now that means he was really old. Uh -huh. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. Uh -huh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Mm -hmm. In other words, he said, um, don't, don't, get a, don't get a wife for Isaac um, from the Canaanites, from, you know, the girls down there at the red light district. Mm -hmm. I want you to be careful of that. Don't, don't bring, you can bring back anybody, but don't bring back one of them Canaanites, okay? Mm -hmm. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my, unto my son Isaac. Uh -huh. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, or perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land, must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest. And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou, um, beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee. And thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia mm -hmm. unto the city of Nahor, and he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening and the time that women go out to draw water. And he said... O Lord God, here he is praying, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city came out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel or the girl of the virgin to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink and she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. And let, the, let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. I go ahead and I will read to verse 20. It says in verse 15, it says, And it came to pass before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebecca. Amen. Everybody say Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the damsel was very fair. That's a King James way of saying she was fine as wine. She was very fair to look upon. A virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. Mm -hmm. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. When she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted, this is the last verse that I'll read for now, and she hastened and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, today we... we, we it might take us a few weeks on this, at least a couple I know. Today we're going to begin a topic called God, Dating, and Romance. God, Dating, and Romance. We're really going to emphasize the dating part. 
from a biblical perspective, from a spiritual perspective, and how we are to apply this to our lives. So while we're standing, let's pray and bow our heads. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. We give you glory for this day. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity you have given us to be in the house of our God. I pray that you speak to us today as only you can. Um, God, this is a unique type of message, a unique type of subject. But God, we know that even with this uniqueness, you still have a word from the Lord. Speak to us as only you can. Save us, deliver us, set us free. Give us what we need. Your anointing is here and I pray that you don't waste it. Let your anointing do what it has purpose to do. God, we thank you in advance for what you shall say and do amongst your people. And it's in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus we do pray. We say amen, 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 and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. God dating and romance. Um, whew, I'm going to kind of do like y'all do a little bit and sit down while I teach a little bit on today. Um, you feel free, you're good. All right, so um, God dating and romance. Somebody has um, said that the key to happiness in marriage is not so much to find the one person who will make you happy, but it's to avoid the person who makes you miserable. Mm. <laughs> I mean, think about that for a minute. It's not so much about finding the person who makes you happy, but it's to avoid the person who will make you miserable. Now, we're talking about dating. Um, the process of dating is different for us as believers um, versus those who are of the world. Mm -hmm. um, there is a different set of rules that we abide by. There's a di when it comes to relationships, there's a different set of rules that we abide by. And I want, I want you to know this especially, that the dating process is the second most yes. important process in your life right behind you giving your life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is no other process that is more important than the dating process um, other than your salvation. Uh, because who you ultimately, if, if it's God's plan and God's desire, who you ultimately will end up as um, a marriage um, partner, as your husband or wife, um, who you ultimately will end up being with will definitely um, help you or hinder you in your destiny and purpose. That's right. That's right. I, I'm, I'm telling you exactly what I know. And it's so important that you understand the importance of this topic and that you don't take it lightly. That's right. Um, it's so critical that we are victorious in our relationships. Um, our relationships can affect us in a great way. Um, spiritually, financially, and even emotionally. That's right. Um, truth be told, a lot of our problems, if we probably would never um, admit it, but a lot of our problems comes with relationships. Yes. I would guarantee you if you was to, we, if we were to take a poll in this room and around churches today, around the world, if we was to ask people what was their number one prayer or what is their um, prayer life mostly consist of, most people will tell you it has to do with some relationship in their life. That's right. Most people are not praying about money. Most people are not praying about a job. Most people are just praying that they're able to get along in their family. Amen. I'm preaching better, y'all saying amen. amen. Most people are praying for that babe. They're praying for that boo. They're praying for that significant other. They're praying for that husband, that wife, their girlfriend, or their right. boyfriend. Right. They're praying for those things. I have a, I have a model. I have a, I have a process. I have um, something that I live by is that I believe that me as a husband, I shouldn't always have to be the number one thing my wife has to pray about. I'm going to say that again. I thought I'd get at least 10 more amens on that. Mm -hmm. My wife's number one prayer concern shouldn't always be her husband. Amen. It should be other things. It, it should be, you know, things like, you know, getting the dryer fixed or getting the washing <laughs> machine to work right or getting the dishwasher to work right or getting things like that, to, you know, to be fixed or something like that. It, it shouldn't be, Lord, every morning fix my husband. Amen. That's right. Okay. At least it shouldn't be. 
It's not. not. Okay, it's not. it's not. Okay, that's good. That makes me feel good. <laughs> that shouldn't be her prayer every morning. And even vice versa, it shouldn't be my prayer every day, Lord, fix my wife. That's right. Okay? It, yeah. it, and, and so, though, if we don't get victory in relationships, we'll become depressed and we'll become so overly concerned mm -hmm. even that it'll take over our prayer life to where when there should be other things we should be concerned about and praying about we're always praying about those things that we should already have victory over that's right um so it um the dating process and even marriage it symbolizes of course uh, the love of christ to the church and the yes. church's response Amen. of love to christ Amen. um now let me say this y'all you know this is what 2018 is that what year it is? It's too, it's too, I've been watching Back to the Future for the last few days with my kids, so I don't know if it's 19, what, they, what year they went back to? What year? They, 1985, and then when they went back to what? They went back 55, something like that. It's 2008. Now, let me tell y'all something. When I just scope and scan today, the dating process in 2018 seems really hard. It seems really hard. You know, I even think about the music and the stuff that it has inspired people to love. Like when I was growing up, it was here and now. <laughs> I promise to love faithfully. You faithfully. <laughs> You're all I need. Here and now. <laughs> but you know what they sang in the day? Came through dripping, drip, drip. Came through dripping, drip, drip. These are the kids' love songs. Bad and bougie. Bad and bougie. Bad and bougie. I'm like, okay. Drop it like it hot. Drop it like it. You know, I mean, it just, it's just, I'm like, oh my God. I mean, there's no courtship. There's no talking about significant things. There's no discussions. There's no getting to know one another. It's just, you know, just getting right to it. And then the next day, what's your name, girl? I mean, it's so backwards today. And then we're wondering why we're having the problems that we have. We're wondering why we're having the situations that we have. We're wondering why we're having the circumstances that we have. Because we just skip everything and we go straight to the bed. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. You ain't got to say it. I brought my own amens today. Amen. Amen. And, and, and it's different today. And, and, and um, I was, man, I was listening to something. You know, I was like, oh, Lord, Jesus, this is what they're listening to today. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a little different. It's just it's a little different, different. Yes. But I think it's very important that we understand it's the body of Christ. Why, why, why do we take time to talk about relationships? Why is this being taught? Because relationships are in the, in the Bible. Relationship preach the gospel. If you look at scripture, Jesus tells us that we are the salt of the world. Those that we come in contact with may never, ever come into this church um, right now and hear the gospel preached, but they may see your lifestyle, how you treat your wife, how you treat your spouse, how you treat your children, and say, oh, my God, I remember 20 years ago. When we was running in the streets together, she was a little bit different. But since she come to know Jesus, her life has changed. She treat her spouse different. She treat her children different. Even on our job, when we work with some kind of people, you know, people that's really mean to us, she treat them different. And because your lifestyle, the way you relate to other people, people inquire and they become, um, they become eager to know the Jesus and the God that you serve. So relationships, who you connect with, who you date, who you marry is so very important because whether you know it or not, you're preaching. Yeah, yeah. You're preaching. The lives that you live, who you connect with can bring you closer to God or it can separate on, you from come God. Come on, you preaching. So relationships are very important. Very relationships, important. Relationships, some people may not come and hear the word of God on a Sunday morning yet. But by you living and taking note of who you're connecting with, who you're dating, who you're, who you're aspiring to hook up with, that, the, the way you treat people, even those that, the Bible says, treat even your enemies right. That's right. Pray for even your enemies. When people see you treating people that really dogged you out and stabbed you in your back, how you relate to them, mm -hmm. how you bless them, how you, you pray for them even though 
thing. Like, you know, I got to get to know this Jesus D. Ivory talking about. That's right. I got to know, got to know right. this Jesus that, that Alicia talking about. That's right. So dating, relationships, the way we relate to other people is very important. That's right. That's why we take time to sit down and talk about it. Because like you said, our society is totally different. That's right. Our society says treat people the way you want to treat them so that you can get higher on the ladder. But That's God right. says, no, 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 no. Bring, bring them come up on, with come you. On, come on. Come so on. relationships on. are very important. Very. Very important. Jesus saved us and left us here. He did. For a reason. If he didn't leave us here for a reason, he would have took us to heaven the moment right. we got saved. That's right. But he left us here for a reason. For you, your family, your children, your grandchildren to speak life through the way you live. So the way you relate to people speaks volumes that's why we're taking the come time on. to talk about dating come on come on so listen um let's let's get into this we're going to yes. give y'all some stuff let's get into this um, um in genesis 24 i want to set up yes. this story real quick um just in case you don't know this is the longest chapter in the book of genesis yes, this is, is the longest chapter now it's it's kind of amazing the longest chapter in the book of genesis is devoted to a marriage and devoted to relationship yes it's, it's not when Abraham sacrifices Isaac. It's not any chapter about Joseph's life. It's not any chapter yes. about Jacob. Yes, the longest true. chapter in the book of Genesis has to do with a relationship between a man and a woman. Yes. And him choosing a wife or his um, Abraham's servant choosing a wife for his son. So yes. that lets you know it's vitally important. Vitally. Now, um, so because finding the right woman for Isaac is absolutely essential. Everybody say absolutely essential. Absolutely essential. All right, say, say this with me. Say, it's absolutely essential. Absolutely essential. That I find the right person. That I find the right person. To be with. To be with. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. All right, now, now I, want you, I want you to get this. Now, again, you see in this chapter, you, we, see, we see marriage and a man and a woman coming together. And this scripture passage is given in the context of Abraham sending his servant out to find a bride for Isaac. Uh -huh. This is one of the most beautiful Old Testament pictures of God sending the yes. Holy Ghost yes. out to bring a bride in for his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh, yes. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. Yes. The church, those of us who are saved, those of us who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Eliezer is a type of the Holy Spirit that draws uh, that drew us in to the Lord Jesus Christ yes. whether you know yes. it or not you didn't come to God on your own mm -mm. the Holy Ghost went and convicted your heart and pulled you in it, and that's yes. why you know we say things like I found the Lord you didn't find God God wasn't lost he found you that's right he found yes. you and, and this is kind of like a picture even mm -hmm. of salvation. That's yes. why even like marriages and weddings, and I love marriages, yes, I love weddings, yes. I love going to, you know, I wish it was more and more and more. I, when I was growing up, my grandma Susie, it seemed like every, <laughs> if we wasn't in a funeral, we was, on, we was in a wedding every other weekend growing up. And I love yes. them, but, you know, it's almost like, you know, that doesn't even hardly happen anymore. You know, we, we got a, I got a cousin getting married Saturday. We, we are excited about it. We can't wait to go to it and be a part of it. I get to, I get to dress up, you know, and I get to take <laughs> selfies and put on Instagram. You know, I, I watch a lot of y'all all put self as I get to do it I get to dress up and all of that stuff so I love it yes. I love it I love being a part yes. of uh, but but not only that but it's a picture marriage and wedding is a picture of God drawing us yes. to him yes. by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. you, when you when you when you see that when you see even in a wedding when you see a bride walking yes. down the aisle and she's being escorted in by Ooh. her father or being yes. escorted in by another man, another person. It is a symbolic action of the Holy Ghost bringing us to God. Is that man that stands up there, that's the groom. Yes. He is a symbol of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's a symbol of yes. Jesus Christ waiting for his bride to come down the aisle and to come to him. And yes. that's what it was like when you got saved. The Holy Ghost drew you into yes. him. But not only it is a picture of that, it is also a picture of when Jesus comes for us and when or when yes. he when, when he cracks the sky and the Bible says that we are the bride of Christ we're going to go to be with him yes. and we're going to be at his supper we're going to sit at the, the supper, marriage supper the marriage supper yes. and that's going to be a wonderful enjoyable thing and a wonderful amazing thing and so marriage is symbolic of so many extraordinary and so many great things that yes. we that we can learn from so check this out I want you to get get this too as well we understand Sarah was Abraham's wife 
wife, and she has been dead for three years. Mm -hmm. And Abraham is now, you heard me, we heard us read at the beginning that he was well stricken in age. He was 140 years old, mm. 140 years old. The Bible says he's advanced or stricken in age as Moses described it. And while death was still, or still 35 years away because Abraham lived to be 175. That's how long I'm going to live. I'm going to live to be 175, all right? And, but check this out. <laughs> Abraham had no reason, though, to presume um, he would live to such an age. So he began to make preparations mm -hmm. for his passing and for his death. And his, Now, check this out. He's thinking about dying, and his greatest concern was the marriage of Isaac to a woman who will help him to raise a godly seed, yes. as God had already told him yes. in chapters earlier that he was going to do in his life. That's he told right. him that I'm going to raise up a godly seed through you and through your seed. Now, the only way that can happen was that his son had to be married to a godly seed. Right. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? He had to be connected to somebody that was godly. Mm -hmm. And so what he does is he gets ready to send out Eleazar to find a wife for his son. His servant Eleazar is getting ready to go out, and he only has two stipulations. Abraham only has two stipulations that's, that he states. He says this, first, that the wife must not be a Canaanite. Mm -hmm. Okay, we read, he said the wife, he said, I want, you to go get, I want you to go get a honey for my, my son, but she can't be a Canaanite, number one. Okay? Because there's a danger of marrying someone when you have a covenant with God and they don't have a covenant with God. That's right. Okay, I want you to get that. I want you, there's a danger. Now, many people have used this scripture to try to justify and try to say, well, you know, the Bible says that Abraham only wanted his son to marry um, in the family or marry his own people, so that means that God only wanted him to marry the same color. It has nothing to do with color. It has everything to do with covenant. That's right. Covenant. God can care less if you marry an Asian, marry an Australian, um, marry a Martian if you find one. <laughs> he can care less. The main thing that he wants to make sure is that they have a covenant with God. In other words, that they know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Amen. See, because what happens often is that we have it backwards. We find somebody that's fine, that looks good, that's got a nice job, got pretty teeth and cute ears, and then we try to make them into having a covenant with God. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they don't have a covenant with God, it's dangerous territory. Yes, it is. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen, amen but amen. I still preach it anyhow. Amen. So it's dangerous. And Isaac must not under any circumstances be taken back, as he says, to Mesopotamia from whence God had called him. So Eliezer knew that he could not force a woman to return to Canaan. So Abraham only asked him to do his best. Um, you, you know, because also in this conversation, Eliezer, he says to, he says to uh, Abraham, he said, hey, and, and, and he's sitting here. Now, re re remember, a Abraham, he's, he's well stricken in age, so he's probably on his deathbed, and he's talking to Eliezer. And Eliezer says, well, what if she doesn't come back with me? What if I find a good woman and she doesn't come back with me? Abraham says to him, he says, well, if she doesn't want to come back, you're not under any obligation to try to bring her back. Now, there's great, there's great revelation in that. Mm -hmm. What is the revelation? The revelation is you cannot make somebody love you that doesn't love you. That's right. That's right. I want to tell you one dangerous thing for you to do is to pray these kind of prayers, like trying to get somebody to start loving you that doesn't love you. Amen. God, just make them love me. God, make them notice me. God, make them like me. Do you want to know what that is? That's witchcraft. witchcraft. <clears throat> because if you can control somebody's emotions to love you, if you can control somebody's emotions to like you, that is not the spirit of God. God is a free will God. God ain't going to make nobody love you. He ain't going to make nobody like you. Abraham said, if they don't want him, if they won't come back with you, you're out of this obligation. Don't try to force love on people. That's right. And a lot of people get themselves in dangerous relationships. They fat. I don't I done been in church long and I don't seen people try to fast and pray somebody into loving them and getting into a relationship with them. Let me That's tell you right. something. If it, if it don't fit, don't force it. 
That's right. You know what I'm saying? If it That's don't right. fit, don't force it. Just relax and let it go. Just because you want it doesn't, doesn't mean, mean that it it's going to be so. That's, right. That's a good old song right there. If it don't fit, don't force it. <laughs> Amen. I'm Amen. telling you, quit trying to force a relationship with somebody that don't want you. Amen. Because if you make them love you in about 30 days, that spirit going way off and they're going to be like, who in the world I'm with? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's I don't true. Care if they, I don't care if they're uglier than an old grandma frying pan skillet. If they love you, you better get with somebody that loves you and want to be with you and cares for you and that, that, that will follow you wherever you go. Amen. That is so true. That's preaching. I felt an unction. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's just the Bible. Let me give you an example. Leah. Mm -hmm. Come on. The Bible talks about Jacob having a wife named Leah. And she, Jacob loved Rachel, but she loved, she loved Jacob. And she did everything to woo Jacob to love her. She had children upon children upon children. Women, take note. Having a baby ain't going to keep him. Preach. Preach. That's preach. Preach. There is no guarantee you giving your body to a man means he's going to give his heart to you. Come on. That's scripture. Read Genesis. Read Genesis. Read Genesis. Let me save you some heartache. Read Genesis. Giving your body to a man is not guaranteed that he's going to give his heart to you. Follow what? God. Follow God. Follow God. Follow God. He'll, he won't show you. God will show the man who you are. That's Glory scripture. I'm getting ahead of myself, but go ahead. No, Pastor. no, no. What, what Drake said, uh, this is only the beginning. Let me not get ahead of myself. Let me not get ahead of myself. <laughs> they don't know that, all right? Okay. Um, <laughs> prayer. Prayer. He prays. Yes, he did. Somebody say he prays. He prays. All right, now notice he doesn't pray. Eliezer doesn't pray for a good-looking woman. He, he's, he's not searching for a beauty queen. He's not searching for a, a sultry babe. It doesn't even come up into his prayer. All he asks is for a girl who will water his camels. That's kind of strange, ain't it? Every time I read this story, I'm like, okay, that would be like you pulling up to, to get some gas and, you know, a girl come out and say, you know, can I put some air in your tires? <laughs> you know, or... You know, she get one of them things, like Brother Dale, she get one of them things and start cleaning your windows, you know, and you, you, look, you sit there looking like, what in the world is up with this? I mean, like, what is up? That's what it would be like because, you know, a camel was their ride back then. And so she, she says, okay, you want some water? And, and you know, and she, she gives him water. And before you know it, she's giving the camels water. Mm -hmm. And this is what he prays for. He prays that, yeah. um, you know, she would... Um, also water the camels. You, you, you yes. said, go ahead. I think it's important that we understand when he's praying this. First of all, I just love it that he sought the will of God. He That's said, right. Lord, sometimes when you don't know what you're looking for, you need to say, God, show me something. Okay. Show me a sign. Mm -hmm. and he wasn't asking God to show him a girl that she could be a servant. He was asking God to show me a girl that has a spirit of hospitality, that has a generous spirit, that's kind and compassionate. Not one that says, it's hot out here. I ain't about to put no one up picture for you. Your camels. But no, she puts other people before herself. Your camels? Yeah. She didn't have that kind of, you better get yours, I'm going to get mine. No, she didn't have that spirit. She was like, hi, sir, how are you? Can I help you today, sir? He was praying, God, show me a young lady that has Christ-like character. Show me a lady that's hospitable, that is willing to help even a stranger. Keynote women, be hospitable. Yeah, yeah. And if the God is God is sending a man your way, he's going to take note of that. He's going to take note of that. Let me hospitable. say this. There is nothing more sexy than a hospitable woman. There, there is nothing more sexy than a woman that is, that is willing to help serve others. That's, yeah. sex, that's sexy to me. Ooh. That's just sexy to me. <laughs> sexy. Stingy women turn me off. Women that just come into a room, they don't try to help nothing. They don't try to serve. They're not hospitable. You go to their house, your, your mouth feels like it has a thousand cotton balls in it. They won't ask you for, if you want water. They won't ask you for nothing. 
They just totally turned me off. But it's something about a woman who puts others before herself. Amen. And so, and so I, Eliezer, I, you got to get this. The Bible says he shows up at the time where the women come out to the well. Mm -hmm. He's sitting in a corner. And he's just looking at these women that come out. Mm. And he's checking out the different women that comes out. He's, he's evaluating the mm -hmm. women that comes out. And something sticks out to him about Rebecca. Something sticks out. Something. He's in the shadows watching these women. And he's in the shadows and one yes. woman sticks out to him. My, my, my kids yesterday, um, yesterday afternoon, they asked me a question. <laughs> I don't even know how we, they got to ask this question. I think it was Patrick asked, yes, Daddy, Patrick. how did you and Mama get engaged? And he's heard this story a million times. he's heard times. this story a million times. We, t we talk to our kids about it all the time. And I tell them, uh, we started dating back in 1995, November the 12th. 19, was it November 11th or November 12th? I'm sorry, Lord Jesus. Lord, y'all pray for me. It was, it was in November. Officially, I November shouldn't have said 11. a day. It's just November <laughs> two, nine, 1995. It was November, okay. Jesus, help me, help me. But I, I told him we started dating in 1995, and I, of course, I knew instantly that I, I wanted to marry her instantly. But before we started dating, um, most of y'all know I was the minister of music over at Truvine and Stark. She was in the choir, and um, she was this cute little girl who had glasses on. I mean, them glasses, it was like them Catwoman glasses she had. And... Um, <laughs> I was just watching her from the shadows. <laughs> and so I started asking questions. I, asked, I, I said, is she dating anybody? <laughs> Some people said, well, I don't think she's dating somebody. And somebody said, well, I think somebody like her. Well, I said, well, that ain't going to work because I'm taking her for myself. <laughs> she mine. Like Michael said, the girl is mine, mine, mine. She going to be mine. So I watched her in the shadows, though. And I started evaluating and started watching her demeanor started watching how she talked to people how she treat people and then so um i got enough gumption to um go ask her parents if i could take her out for a day that was the scariest day of my life when an asked her daddy um, that was, he was just a scary I mean, he just was like a grizzly bear to me i went i mean he and let me say this to the young folk and, and everybody in here. I think that's the way it should be, that no young man should be trying to take a girl out on a date until he go talk at least to her daddy. Her, if the daddy's not there, the granddaddy, a uncle, a brother, or somebody, and instead of trying to sneak her out the house and take her on a date and get all mixed up in some craziness. I'm preaching better, y'all saying amen. So I took her out on a date. We went to TGI Fridays out on Archer Road, and, and I, I, just, I just studied her. I watched how she talked to waitresses. I, I watched how she talked to different people. And I just, I just watched her from the shadows. Not only that, I went with her to family reunions. Mm -hmm. I studied her. I always say this all the time. You young people in here, if you're thinking about dating somebody, you are thinking about marrying somebody, you need to go with them to family reunions. You, need to go, you want to know why you need to go with them to family reunions? Because you don't know it, but you, when you marry that person, you marry everybody at the family reunion. Amen. Everybody. <laughs> crazy Uncle Drunk Joe, your crazy Aunt Sally, your crazy cousin Bobby Lee, you are marrying everybody at that family reunion. You, you might be saying, I ain't marrying all. No, everybody that's at the family reunion is in the person you're going to marry. Everybody, everybody, the one that's sitting over there barbecuing, the one sitting out there in the car, the one that's walking around and just doing the chicken, everybody that is at the family reunion, you're going to marry them. Yes, you are. They are in there. And so, you, you know, you, you need to, you, you know, dating is a time for investigating that's and getting right. to know these people. Y'all know me, I say all the time, you need to be with someone for at least four seasons before you decide to marry them. Because who you are in the summer is not who you are in the winter. Amen. You're not. 
I don't know about y'all. When I get when I when I when it gets to winter time, I get real lovey dovey. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in a loving attitude around Christmas. Summer, I don't want to be bothered with. It's hot. I'm sweating. I don't want to be around people. I, you know, I think I might be funky or something. You know, I mean, I just, that's just, I mean, you know, but if you're not careful, you just done been with somebody for 10 days. You're like, oh, yeah, we need to go get married. And then fall come around. Who is you? You need to be with somebody through cycles and, right. through, and, and, and study them and watch That's them right. from the shadows. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing yeah. what I'm saying? Amen. All right, let, me, let me give y'all this. We got to go. I got, I, we got to see if Tiger Woods is going to win today. So we got we to gotta move. All right? Here, here, here's, here's our first points. We talk about this. Um, parental consent. This is point number one. P parental consent. Now, I promise you we're going to move right along. Parental consent. Now, I'm not going to read all these scriptures, but after he finds Rebecca, after Eliezer finds Rebecca, he, he then goes back to her, uh, with her to her house, all right? And then he has to convince her dad and her brother um, that, you know, that it's good for her to come with him to marry um, mm -hmm. Isaac. Mm -hmm. um, and this delicate task was skillfully handled by Eliezer. Matter of fact, the urgency of this mission was, was indicated by his refusal. If you read in the story, he refuses to even eat until uh -huh. the purpose of his journey was explained. They try to give him food, and he's like, no, I don't want to eat until y'all know while I'm here. That's right. And so what he wants to make sure is he gets parental cons consent. Now, when it comes to dating, I want to tell you something. When it comes to dating, um, it is very, very important that we have parental consent mm -hmm. as it pertains to the dating process. Because yes. one thing you don't want to do is date and ultimately end up with somebody that the, that the parents do not agree with. That's right. Now, of course, we understand there's, there's, there's situations, of course, you know, some parents are just kind of crazy. Some parents, they don't want you to be with nobody. I mean, they just, they, 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 they're not with nobody, so they don't want you to be with nobody. But it is important that you seek out parental consent. Now, if, you, if you're in a situation where you, you know, where you don't, if your parents are not there or uh, you don't have parents that have good judgment in this area mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. important that you do things like maybe go to your pastor mm -hmm. go to your first lady mm -hmm. go to somebody who has maturity in that Amen. level right. so that they can help that's to right. guide you and that's help right. to help you to make a good decision that's in your right. relationships i'm preaching better than y'all saying amen, amen. it amen. is very very important there are so many people i mean i let me tell you something there's a lot of people their number one prayer concern is their in-laws <laughs> Because they didn't do things right from the beginning and get things um, right when it comes to parental consent and all of those different That's things, right. they built up a mess. And so it is very, very important as it pertains to parental consent um, in that area. It's, it's, it's real important. When I first started thinking about, um, I, I never forget, when I started thinking about marrying my wife, I, I never forget riding with my mom. We was in our old brown cutlass supreme and we was on our way to Gainesville, and we was, um, my mom's car, we was passing by the prison, and I asked my mom, I said, what do you think about Pergina? I was still the musician at True Vine. I said, what do you think about Pergina? She said, oh, I like her. <laughs> Immediately, we went to Gainesville, went and, did, went and did what we had to do with my mom, got back, I drove to Stark Walmart and put an engagement ring on Lailway. I didn't have enough money for Freemans. I didn't have enough money for Zales. I didn't have enough money. How many of y'all know you got to do what you got to do? You, I, I wasn't trying to impress nobody. I went there. I said, do you got layaway I could put this ring on? They said, yes, we do. I said, I put, I put $10 down. <laughs> I had that thing on layaway for 11 months. I was working at the bank every other week. I put $20 down. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You, get, you got to, I ain't trying to impress nobody. Shoot, it wasn't, it wasn't no doggone social media back then to take pictures and put it on social media. I wasn't trying to impress nobody. And I'm glad you bring that up because we live in a society today where everything is so microwavable and everything's fake. 
and everything is pretend and, and and no one is there to give people guidance baby that is not real don't accept that we, we live in a society where you can date people at a, at a click of a button come on click of a button you haven't even invited your spiritual mother your physical mother come your on. great auntie or somebody to say sweetheart um something i don't feel right about that picture you know we this is how we choose mates today Social media is messing us up. Come on. And there is no consent. You haven't even asked anyone about this person. You just hop on the plane and go across the country. Come on. Come on. Sweethearts, men and gentlemen, we have to look for wisdom. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, seek wisdom. Come on. James says, seek wisdom. Solomon says, don't marry no girl. Take it from me. I got 700 of them. Come on. Come on. He had 300 wives and seven, uh, 300 wives and... 1,000 total uh, yeah, women. Yeah, it was 1,000 to 300 wives. women. How you do that? A whole just, bunch. I'm like, how you do that, Solomon? He says, take heed from... Read Proverbs. He's an old man. He said, take heed from me. Don't marry these girls that don't know the Lord. He said... They'll turn your heart away from the things of God and you'll be all messed up. The Bible says, get parental consent. If, you know, if your parents aren't saved, if your parents aren't growing, or they have some issues, get some wise counsel. Get some wise counsel, please. Get wise counsel because today the enemy is making things so easily accessible. Oh, I'm good. I look good. And when you meet him, you be like, oh, you don't, you don't look like what you put on the social media. Come on, come on. You don't come look on. like. They or they edited something. Yeah, or they may trim. look like it, but on the inside there. Come on, come on. What is this? You know, please take heed from the word of God and get wise counsel. Get parental consent. Jesus Christ. Get it. Yes. Get it. Yes, yes, Number yes. two, wait for God's time. Yes. Wait for God's time. Abraham wasn't in a hurry. Isaac was 40. By some standards, for some people, he probably was 10 years late. But it was well worth waiting for the mate of God's choice. Amen. I've often witnessed people who make a decision hastily fearing that the time for marriage was quickly passing them by and they mm -hmm. married just whoever was ever mm -hmm. because they concluded anyone was better than no one. Mm -hmm. And it's better to wait for God's timing than to make a decision on your own. That's right. That's Even right. in dating, wait for God's timing. That's right. God ain't sent nobody yet. Just get busy for the Lord and Amen. And, oh, and, and yeah. Get busy for God and find a hobby. Go help out some elderly people. Go and volunteer at the mm -hmm. library. Go and mm -hmm. paint somebody's house. Go do something. Mm -hmm. But don't jump into something just because um, you think the time is running out and you see everybody else on social media with their bay and their boo. I done told y'all about that. Now, I, I done told y'all a lot of these people, they start off real fast with these bay and boo <laughs> vacations. I'm on vacation. They start off. They start off like Usain Bolt. Then they run out of gas real fast. You're like, where your bay at now? <laughs> oh, I ain't tell you about that. I'm sorry. Something happened. Well, why you didn't post a picture y'all breaking up? You posted a picture y'all on vacation. <laughs> Will I be like, why, why, why don't you, why don't you post a? You, you got 300 likes on vacation. Post a picture y'all arguing and cussing each other out. Post a picture in the video of that. We, I'm here. I'm like the, like the young folks say. I'm here for that. I'm here for. I'm here for that. <laughs> I'm here for that. Post that. <laughs> you posted the picture y'all flying in the plane together. Now post a picture y'all breaking up so we all can witness that. <laughs> that is better than reality TV. We want to see it. And there are even shows out there today. I was sitting there doing someone's yeah. hair the other day. There's a sh uh, show, uh, 90 Day Fiance. What? Yes. What? All types of shows. And 90 people just days. feed into 90 days. Oh, man. 90 day. So many different things out there. And if we're taking our wisdom from TV and social media, you're going to wind up in a heartache. Up. It'll mess you up. We've sat beside people, you know, sitting and talking with them. They're crying, oh, my credit messed up. You know, messed up my credit in six months. This. How am I going to get out of this? Baby, don't rush things. Don't rush it. Don't rush. Ladies, mm, I, know, I know we're out of time, but the Bible says. Come on. 
biblically speaking, men initiate relationships. Come on. Men initiate. Jesus initiated first his love for us. That's right. That's right. If you, if you want that man to be a man, let him initiate let and him pursue come after you. you. Come on. Let him come after you. Let him pursue you. Come on. Now, I'm not saying walk around and cover yourself up. No. She, Rebecca came and did what she was supposed to do, but she didn't fall over Eliezer and, you know. Come on. He pursued her. All I right. was listening to a group of men saying, telling women that when you take the lead a lot, you strip them of what they, you know, their man, their manhood. Right. Men have this, you, you tell me if I'm wrong. You're right. That, that, that tenacity to, to conquer, to, to pursue. And when a woman get up and... I'm going to get those digits. <laughs> Y'all know nothing about you know? that. Y'all know nothing about that. Y'all know nothing about that movie. Y'all know you nothing about know? House Party. So I'm if you want your husband to lead in marriage... Let him lead you while courting. I know that's an old word, but courtship means I'm building up something. I'm fortifying something, not just dating you. I'm not just time, time stamping you, but I'm courting you. I'm building you up. So if you don't want to strip him of his manhood and marriage and leadership in marriage, don't do it in dating. All right. That's it. That's good. That's good. Let us, let's give these last few points. Number three, look in the right place. Look in the right place. Yes. Eliezer didn't go find this woman down at the red light district. That's right. I know it's raining, but I can preach over the rain. Look in the right place. Abraham instructed his servant not to look for a wife among the Canaanites. He knew that his relatives feared God and that their offspring would share a common faith. This is where the servant went to look, no matter if it were many dusty miles away. Many people, they try, okay. I'm going to try to say this as nice as I can. If you found them in a club while they was looking at somebody else, do not be upset if they still look after somebody else. That's right. Okay. Where did you find them? You got to look, if you want a godly mate, like, it's like people keep telling me, Pastor, I want somebody that's godly, but they don't go to church. <laughs> I'm like, well, what the ham fat are you doing? <laughs> that ain't working. You know, it's like people who want to live healthy or be healthy, and they bypass the treadmill in the house every day. It doesn't work like that. You got to look in the right place. Everybody say, look in the right place. Look in the right place. All right. Let me move quickly because some of us, we get scared when it's lightning. We think Jesus is coming back. <laughs> Number four, seek godly qualities. Seek godly qualities. Mm -hmm. Again, the servant didn't look for physical appearance, even though she would have passed that with flying colors because yes. the Bible said that she was a good-looking woman. Mm -hmm. To the to the servant, though, beauty was a desirable thing, but it was not fundamental and the essential thing. The woman he sought must be one who trusted in the God of Abraham and who had maintained sexual purity. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, she must be a woman who manifested Christian character as reflected in her, in her response to the request for water. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, she had to have godly qualities. And then number five, be careful of being unequally yoked. Be careful of being unequally yoked. Now, we're not just talking about you're saved and you look for another saved person. You can find another Christian and still be unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. The point is, marry someone who is just as serious about God as you are. Exactly. Amen. Okay? I couldn't marry nobody who I was going to have to convince to come to church. I already had an inkling that I'd probably end up either being a pastor or being someone in the kingdom that led people. I couldn't have nobody in my life that when I stood before people, everybody wondered, where the first lady? That just, that just couldn't happen. I couldn't have nobody that I had to convince 
to be in the house of the Lord, to be in church, to pray, to read their Bible, to love people, to forgive people. I couldn't do that. I had to have somebody who was just as serious about God as I am. Now, that doesn't mean that you have all of the same, what we, what we talked about, all of this, like, Hobbies, passions, passions, hobbies. There's thing, things my wife like. I just, I just, I'd be like, I don't even understand why she like it. <laughs> There's some things she likes. I'd just be like, that, that ain't working for me. That ain't working. Like we go, I was telling the, 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 the youth this morning in Sunday school class, we go out to eat. My wife orders veggie burgers. <laughs> that ain't me. I want, I want meat. I want, I want a juicy burger. I want, that's what I'm talking about is that. I want a juicy burger. That's what I want. My wife, she, want, she asked the waitress, where is the healthy side of the menu? That ain't me. <laughs> Give me something that's going to have me burping, farting. That's going to have me, <laughs> have me crying. Give me stuff like that. That's what I want. Okay? But there's things my wife likes I just don't like. You know, there's things I like she don't like. She don't like sports. My wife can care less about sports. I can't remember the last time me and my wife have watched a football game together. Oh, we watch them together. You don't be paying attention. I'm telling you, every Gator game she went to while I was the chaplain, she was like, when this is going to be over, you know, where's the yellow line at for first down? We went to see the Magic play. Tracy McGrady was playing. He broke the single game scoring record. My wife was over there snoring sleep. She don't care nothing about that stuff. It's just not her passion. But for me, it's something totally different. I watch, I watch cricket. If you don't know what sport that is, I watch cricket. I watch a boring soccer game. I, I will watch, I watch the the the. World Series of Poker and don't even know how to play poker. I, I, I'm serious. I just sit there and watch it. I'm like, this is great. I watch auto racing. My wife don't care nothing about that. But we're equally yoked because we have the same vision as it pertains to our relationship with God. Amen. So it doesn't mean that always you're going to have the same passion, desires, and hobbies, all that. Thing. But what's mostly important is that we are on the same page spiritually. That's right, that's right. You want to say something in closing, we're done. Oh, wow, there's so much I would like to say, but we'll, we'll pick it up on next week. Um, just be, just, just, I just encourage you to follow Christ if you are married so that the Lord can bring you closer together. If you're single, don't think that that's a, a bad thing. Pursue God and understand, just like he answered the prayer of Eleazar because God had already promised Abraham a certain thing, just follow God and God's will for your life will be done. Amen. Let's stand to our, amen. Let's give God praise for that, y'all. Let's stand to our feet. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask my wife to pray for us. Lord God, we just thank you on today for your word, God. Thank you, God, that you are God that understands us, oh God. You understand that we're in a broken world, God, and you understand that we needed to know real love, and that's why you sent your son, Jesus Christ. So, Father God, on today, God, we submit all of our relationships to you, whether we're single, whether we're dating, whether we're engaged, married, or even divorced, God. We submit all of our relationships to you, God, for you to heal, God, for you to mend, God, for you to restore, God. Father God, we trust you with our lives, God. We trust you, God. We've, we've trusted people and we've trusted situations and systems, but Lord God, those things have failed us, God. So we turn our eyes to you today, God, to teach us, oh God, how to fall in love with you, God. And as we fall in love with you, God, you will show us how to be that person that we need, Lord God. Father God, I pray on today, if there's anyone that is in this room that has a broken heart, God, I pray that you heal their heart, God. I pray that you restore unto them them everything yes, that has been taken away yes, from them God, God. Yes, Father God, God every tear that they have cried God yes, I pray God, God that you will restore unto them joy God I yes, pray Lord, Lord God for every situation that has transpired since the breakup God yes, I pray Lord. that you will turn it around for their good God yes, Father Lord. God we look 
to you for better days, God. We look oh, to you yes, for good God. days, God. We thank yes, you, O oh God, for being a restorer of everything the enemy has taken, oh, God. Yes, thank God. you for your word, God, as it's given us life, God, yes, as it Lord. pertains to marriage and dating, God. Father yes, God, we Lord. thank you now, O oh God, that you're going to do something in our homes, God. Do oh, something yes, in our God. marriages, God. Do something, O oh oh, God, as yes, it relates God. to people, God. Father God, as you heal us, God, help us to be a healing balm to others, oh, yes, God. God. Father God, let us not get tired and lonely in the state that we're in, God, but renew our passion for you, yes, and then Lord. we'll have a passion for life. Yes, Lord, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, and it's in the matchless and mighty loving name of Jesus Christ we say amen. Come on, let's bless amen. the name of the Lord. Come on, amen. let's sing a little bit of this. I love you, Jesus. I, I love you, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, say, I worship. I worship and adore you. Come on, I just want to tell you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, let's show him our love again. Come on, tell him I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, I worship and adore you. I worship and Adore you. Come on, I just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. More than anything. Listen, I want to say this real quick. Um, let's make good decisions in our relationships. Amen. Um, again, a lot of us are already married, but a lot of us, we're surrounded by people as it pertains to relationships, decisions. You know, people, they need to hear the wisdom of people and not only hear the wisdom of people, a lot of us, they need to see it through us. You know, all of us in here that are married, you are an example to those in the church that are not married, or at least we should be. And we need to make sure that we're doing our best and it's our responsibility to give a great example to those who desire to be married. Um, but not only that, those of us that maybe seek to be married or are single and one day will become married, it's important that we apply these principles to our lives. Wait for God's timing, look in the right place, seek godly qualities, parental consent, um, unequally yoked, making sure that we're equally yoked in the things of God. Don't make a bad decision just because we're looking at our watches and looking at our time. Let's make sure that we're making good decisions based upon the word of God. Amen. And if you don't know, ask somebody who knows. Get wisdom, get advice, and let people bless you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big praise one more time. Amen. Listen, y'all be seated. We are going to prepare our hearts to give and to sow Amen. Good to see Sister Tasha back today. Amen. After outpatient surgery. Listen, um, love you guys. Um, of course, we're back with midweek worship. We'll have midweek worship again on this Wednesday. Um, also, a um, couple things to take note of too as well. Um, on August the 12th, uh, we'll be having a prayer walk. Um, at the different schools of our community. If you live in Lake Butler, I want to encourage you to be a part of this prayer walk um, at each of our schools, um, asking for different individuals to go to different schools in our, um, in our city. If, for instance, if you have a child that's in the middle school, I encourage you to go to the middle school during that time, and they're going to convene in front of those schools. Uh, we got both elementary and middle and as well as daycare. Um, so we're going to be at least at two of those schools praying and covering those schools in prayer again but we want to encourage y'all to be a part of this prayer walk we're kind of heading this i'm kind of heading this so i want to encourage y'all to be a part of it and then also on august the 13th the next day that is the day that our kids go back to school we'll be doing our back to school outreach again and we need as much help as that y'all know we give out donuts we give out juice just to let our community know that we care and we're praying for them so if we have any people that can volunteer and help out to come out on that morning, it's just for one hour, just for one hour. We give out Krispy Kreme donuts and juice and coffee. We do it right in front of the church. And 
And a lot of people in our community, they stop by and they look forward to that. We have hundreds and hundreds of people that park in our parking lot. And then they go over to the elementary school, but then also people that come through as well. So if you can help out with that, we'll love for you to assist with that in Jesus' name. All right? Well, listen, we're going to prepare our hearts to give and to sow. So if you can stand to your feet, we are going to give unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Caritha, cuz, good to see you on the day. Good to see you, cuz. Good to see you. God bless you. Brother Dale, you turn what, 52? Oh, boy. Happy birthday to Brother Dale, everybody. Brother Dale just celebrated a birthday on Friday. 50, 54. You're not 64. You're not 64, man. No, man. Happy birthday, bro. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm going to tell y'all this quick story. All throughout high school, <laughs> I ate free lunch every day because of Brother Dale. I had Hawaiian punch and chicken nuggets every day. I didn't have the money. And, you know, he, he, he was in the a la carte area. And I only went through the, 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 regular, um, the regular line when Sister Pat's mom was making that Salisbury steak. Some of y'all don't know about that. She made that Salisbury steak and mashed potatoes. When they said it was Salisbury steak and mashed potatoes day, I went through the line and got that. When it wasn't that, I said, I'm going to see Brother Dale to get me some free Hawaiian punch and free chicken nuggets. I hope you ain't never get in trouble for that, man. Lord Jesus, because I lived off that for four years, y'all. Um, but happy birthday to you again. God bless you. Happy birthday. Amen. Hey, y'all, we're going we're gonna to give unto the Lord. Let's lift our offering to the Lord. We are going to sow this seed unto the Lord. With this seed, you shall meet all of my needs. My giving is an act of my worship, my obedience, and my love to God. You shall use the seed to reach this community, this city, this county, this state, this country, and this world. Today, I decree that every curse of my family is broken, every spell of my family stopped. The seeds of my family is healed because of the seed that I sow. Today I declare that I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give unto the